Hey, it's Edwin Canastracci um, doing a video about Wings Wildlife, which has just come out recently in a super mega awesome deluxe edition, which you see right here. Just opened it up today. And I did a video before, like two years ago, uh, about Motorhead, which a lot of people liked, but I didn't get around to making other videos. But I'm going to start doing some more of these. So I thought this would be a good way to start because Wildlife is a very underrated and underappreciated uh, Paul McCartney album. One of my favorites, I'd say my second favorite after when the album Ram. Uh, and then I, you know, maybe McCartney solo, Band on the Run, but I don't know. I have a really, the thing is, objectively, I know this album is not one of his best. I mean, it's not as well executed as Band on the Run, but just personally, subjectively, there's something about this album that really, uh, connects with me it's his most just straight from the hip a lot like his first solo album McCartney from 1970 where there's a real kind of homespun quality uh, a lot of these songs started off as demos and he didn't really a few of the songs are a little more produced like Dear Friend and Tomorrow there are some songs that do have a little bit of orchestration and other instruments and, but for the most part this is really from the hip it is the first Wings album but it doesn't really sound like what subsequent Wings album sounds like. Uh, sound like it sounds more like like the first McCartney album. It's also kind of similar to the White album, where you have the songs like "Why Don't We Do It in the Road" and like "Wild Honey Pie." This kind of like songs that are really short and kind of fragments, mixed in with some acoustic kind of pastoral type songs like uh, "Mother Nature's uh, Son." It's got that kind of vibe to it. Um, I think it's also, it, I would definitely say, I wouldn't say it's proto-punk, but it's kind of as close to it as McCartney will ever get. In a lot of ways, this is his answer to John Lennon's Plastic Ono band. And as you can uh, see here, I mean, the cover even evokes the Plastic Ono band uh, album cover, whereas that was just John Lennon and Yoko underneath a tree. Uh, with, uh, and this is... Paul, Linda, and uh, the two guys, Danny Lane, and I don't, I don't know the other guy's name, Wings. I'll probably get some crap for that, but hey, the Wings had three different lineups, uh, and it's hard to keep track of all these people's names. But anyway, but this was the first lineup of Wings of the people that were playing with McCartney. It would keep changing. The only thing that didn't change was Linda, Paul, and uh, Danny uh, Lane. But here we go. This is a booklet that came with it. It's very cool. And the vibe of this album, like I said, it's very straight from the hip. It's very different for anything McCartney's really done, save for some of the material in the White Album and the first solo album. Uh, the, even lyrically, and it's fitting because today's the day, it's an anniversary of John Lennon's death, and it's December 8th. And this is definitely the album where Paul is most preoccupied with John Lennon. He did talk about him a little bit in Ram with too many people. There was a, there was kind of a subtle, maybe not so subtle, jab at John in the lyrics. And I think also uh, Three Legs has something to do with the Beatles, but not as much as John Lennon himself thought. John Lennon thought all of Ram was about him. And he got very angry about Paul because of it and wrote the song um, How Do You Sleep, which is very caustic, very... He goes right for the juggler. Like, Paul took a little kind of little jab at John. But then, I mean, don't get John Lennon mad at you because the guy's a wordsmith, and he will, he'll he get a lot meaner than than anyone else could probably get. And it's real. He goes for J Paul's throat in that song. And it's a really good song, although it's also kind of an uncomfortable song because you don't like hearing John kind of say these horrible things about Paul. You know, you want to see the Beatles work it out. You want to see pa Paul and John be friends. So it's kind of, it's a great song, but at the same time, it's kind of a sad song. And and you get two sides of Paul, his answer. He has two songs that kind of answer that song on this album. There's uh, Some People Never Know, which is an amazing song, very uh, overlooked song. And that's kind of his defiant, like, I, there's a line in it, I... Some people sleep just fine. It's kind of as defiant, like me and Linda are going to do our things. And you can be haters. Haters going to hate. We don't care what you do, John and Yoko. We're going to do our things our way. Um, but then I feel there's a song that gets a little deeper to how he really felt, which is Dear Friend. And Dear Friend is probably the darkest song 
Paul ever wrote, and it's very unlike him, and it's a very moody, dark piano ballad, has some orchestration in it, and it gets into how his heartbreak, his heartbreak over what you know happened between him and John, his friend and his uh, former collaborator, and it gets into essentially how he, how John Lennon broke his heart, and it's a very moving song, and anyone who's interested in the Beatles and the dynamic between Lennon and McCartney definitely need to hear this song. I mean, this album alone, you, you should listen to just because of Dear Friend, but the album itself is great. There's also a lot of fun moments. It's you know, that's like the darkest moment on the album for the most part. This is a very fun album. In a way, it's like Plastic Ono Van because it's um, it's off the cuff and Paul screams a lot, like he does that screaming Jay Hawkins thing he does. But whereas in the past, even like songs like Monkberry Moon Delight, he is still singing lyrics. You know, there even in Why Don't We Do It in the Road, it might be one line, one lyric, but over and over again, but it's still a lyric with a meaning. Whereas here on the, the first song, uh, Mumbo, he he's just screaming nonsense, really. He's just going, ah, rah, rah, rah. It's just, it's really nonsense. It's next level. Like even Lennon and Plastic Ono Band wasn't just screaming nonsense. Maybe Yoko was sometimes, but not John. It, but here, Paul is just making noises. But the really cool sounding no noises, it's that voice, that really raspy, savage, helter-skelter, why don't we do it in a road, Paul? But he's just screaming nonsense, and it's and this is where it's like most proto punk. It's really, it's really it takes you aback the first time you hear it. Go, you go, what the what the hell is Paul doing? And I think a lot of people kind of just shut off with this album because of that. But I think it's cool. The more I listen to it, the more I love it. And just to hear, it's like Paul's just getting to the it of rock and roll. Like, I stripped it back on the White Album. We stripped it back. Why don't we do it in the road? So what's the next step after that? Like, how can I peel back the artifice of songwriting and just get to the core of what it feels like to rock out? And that's what Mumbo is. And and then you got a song, Bip Bop, which is actually my favorite song on the album. Second song, which, again, it's not quite as savage and nonsensical as Mumbo. But it is, it's essentially kind of just silly, throwaway, fun, playful lyrics. And it's almost like a nursery rhyme. And that also has kind of a vibe. Like you could picture a song like that. It could have been on the White Album. It's like one of the um, kind of transitional, more offbeat, quirky songs like Wild Honey Pie. Uh, it also got a little like regular Honey Pie. It has a little bit of a 20s kind of quality to it. Just kind of a kind of jazzy swing to it. It's a great song. I love it. Uh, there's the title track. Which is uh, could be like the you know the Smiths Mor Morrissey has meat as murder. Well, Paul has wildlife, and wildlife is a song about animal rights. It's his animal rights song. It's the beginning of him uh, getting into that. Him and Linda travel to Africa, and that's what got him uh, onto the animal rights tip, which he's still on to this day. And this is a, it's a really heavy song. It's really dark. It's still catchy, but and Paul's screaming his head off. And again, if you're a fan of Paul's like uh, screaming Jay Hawkins, Little Richards kind of scream, like I'm down, Helter Skelter, Oh Darling, he, that voice is in uh, full effect here on this song. And it's again, it's a this is one of the darker songs too. And it's, it's really great. Uh, it's got a great creepy organ line. I really love this song. There's uh, this song Tomorrow, which is probably I'd say the poppiest song on the album, the most what you'd kind of expect from McCartney. It's almost like this hidden little pop jam hit that never happened, that just got totally ignored, but it's a really beautiful song. And even that, it's kind of subverting, you know, the Beatles a bit with yesterday. It's like, no, I'm not thinking about yesterday. I'm thinking uh, about, you know, tomorrow. He's moving forward. And this feels like He's wrestling with what Lennon has said to, about him. Lennon like uh, insulted Ram and thought it was a lightweight album. You know, it's a great album. I think it's Paul's you know masterpiece. Uh, but at the time, a lot of people, including Rolling Stones, which Rolling Stone magazine is almost always wrong, so it was wrong about Ram too. But Everyone was kind of hard on Paul, and Paul actually was not selling as much as the other three Beatles at this time. It, 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 of course, that would totally change once Band on the Run came out. But this was like Paul saying, like, I think he was like, hey, I'm not lightweight. I can do some crazy, wild, rockin', hippie stuff, too. And that's I feel like this album is an answer to that. And maybe, ultimately, Paul decided that's not really who he is. But it's really fun to hear him trying to do that. And... And he's a musical genius, so it just it creates one of his most idiosyncratic 
and interesting albums. And I think if anyone who's interested in the Beatles should check it out. And this it's a beautiful uh, box set. It has all kinds of things. These This is the actual disc. And it has rough cuts. And it's funny because even the, the re, it has the remastered version of the album, but even the rough cuts that version's kind of rough. So it's like, oh, rough cuts. How rough is this going to be? And, and they're rough, but they're still... I, I mean, in some ways, I might like the rough cuts even better, although I've only listened to them once. And there's a lot of bonus stuff, a lot of home recordings. There's a very moving home recording of Dear Friend, actually uh, two versions of it. Uh, you get to hear Bip Bop with some kids. Some of that was used in the wildlife. Uh, uh, no, the... the the, the there was some wings compilation a few years uh, back which uh used this stuff i forget the name of it but anyway so but there's a lot of that stuff there's one really beautiful song which i really liked which let's see what's that that song's called um oh when the wind is blowing when the wind is blowing is this beautiful little folk song which sounded like it would have been perfect on wildlife i don't know why it wasn't included but that's a great song and there's some cool jamming stuff. And there's also a DVD I haven't watched yet. There's a book, this book, the one I kept showing, that which I haven't read yet, which I'm looking forward. This is, for, like, I just opened this, like, a couple hours ago. So I'm very excited. But even if you just end up getting just this single-disc uh, remastered version, which will be available, which will be much cheaper, of course, than this uh, box that I got, it's still definitely worth it. It's a very overlooked underappreciated uh, album by Paul McCartney, the beginning of Wings, but really also the end. I kind of see it as a trilogy of his beginning of his solo career after the Beatles. There's there's McCartney, his debut, there's Ram, and there's Wildlife. And I feel it's really Red Rose Speedway is where it kind of begins to be like the mid-70s Wings that it's kind of a different sound. It's a little slicker, still great, but a little different. Whereas Wildlife, I feel, ends this pastoral on the farm of Linda, licking my wounds after the Beatles break up. Like, this is kind of the climax of that. And, like, you know, Dear Friend is, like, the fitting end of that. Like, this is the, this is, like, him really saying kind of goodbye to the Beatles. And it's a great album. I think it's one of the Paul McCartney's best, and I definitely recommend it. You should check it out. Later.